You're live here with Fit Pet Boston Talks, latest episode, episode number 17. Thank you for tuning in and listening, subscribing, liking, and sharing the podcast. I'm super, super stoked to have um, many, many people reach out to me um, and glad to hear what we have to say. While we are in quarantine, my co-host, Laurie Lodato, and I will be doing Q&A sessions and also just some general ranting, which is what we're going to do today. Not a not a ton of topic um, direction, but we are more than happy to just sit down and talk about dogs because we're both in the mood. In the mood. We are in the mood. <laughs> I know. Before we get started, I would like to guide you gently but slightly forcefully to oh. the, <laughs> the rest of the podcast episodes that I've done um, with some really, really talented Boston area dog handlers. So if you are interested in hearing from people who really know what they're doing and in general are just pretty amazing people that have become my friends over the time that we've spent together, please check out the other episodes of the podcast because there's some really, really good stuff in there. And if you are a client of any of the people that I have interviewed, you definitely should get to know them better by listening to them talk about uh, what they do on a regular basis. So that's what the podcast is here for. And I am going to continue to do that as soon as I am able. And in the meantime, you get to hear from us occasionally about what has been going on with us whilst we are in quarantine. And yeah, just some tidbits about dogs. So what's been going on? What's been going on, Laurie? What what does quarantine me- mean to you? What has it brought to to us? <laughs> well, first, I was the one who delayed this podcast because we were supposed to record it Friday night, but I didn't have the spirit. I didn't have the spirit in me. Yeah, we we're not feeling the vibes. I was feeling a little, night. little down and out. I didn't. I didn't have it. I was just in a place. I think how everyone somebody uh, had a meme the other day, and it said, "If anyone house asked me how I am, I'll just say I don't know." And so. Sometimes I feel that way. If I'm with dogs, I feel a little bit more focused. I'm okay. It's after. So it's like any kind of empty time. And so Friday was like a rather empty day. Well, I was busy. You know, I was like taking care of some some dogs that needed some immediate help. But then I was just down and out. Yeah, I did the whole introduction (laughs) on Friday night and I I looked over at you and I'm like, is she going to burst into tears or, uh, all right, let's just stop this (laughs) because it's not, (laughs) something's wrong. I was just like staring off into space. I'm like, I don't, I just don't have it in me. I'm all over the place. I, you know, I don't think quarantine is the best thing in the world, but we got to keep everybody safe. And then I'm like, wow, I don't know if I really mind quarantine so much because I've been able to spend time with my family which never happens. Um, I'm not high stress all the time because it's not 24-7. So I guess I was dealing with all that too. Anyway. But then I had a bunch of dog. Yeah, then we were talking about it the other day. Like we were having dinner with mom and dad on a Saturday night. They never see me. They never see us. Yeah, and we live together. I never (laughs) see you. (laughs) I know, it was funny. So we're in this little studio space that I've commandeered in the house, and I love it because it's carpeted, it has window treatments, so it's a good place. Window treatments. It, that's a fancy name for um, blinds. curtains that look like blinds. they are... They're blinds. What would you call these blinds? They look like Ugly. they're... Ugly. Yeah. You won't let us redo this No, room. I will not let anybody touch anything this is, in this This is this old room. man fashion. Yeah, because it is so awesome for doing sound stuff, and I do a lot of stuff with music and sound and things like that. And as soon as you walk into the room, it just, the sound is completely dead and it's perfect for recording and doing other things. Dead, so like my soul. Yeah. I treat it like my little sanctuary. Anyway, I have a couple sets of speakers set up in here and on Friday night after we had the kind of like come to Jesus moment about like, okay, this podcast is not happening. Laurie and I just like sat on the sofa that I have in here and like listened to an entire black keys album and just like, chatted and i think it was the first time ever we've sat in this room just yeah, like we don't out. sit down yeah. we work and then pass out yeah high five before bed sleep <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything's fine yeah so yeah i mean i think both of us one of the things that i realized in this quarantine is that i actually have the ability to train a dog and like spend quality time with them and get 
results that are very easy to see from the owner's point of view and from my point of view. And it's given me a lot of confidence, but at the same time, it's also made me realize that I need to start having more focused training sessions with the dogs and or cut down on dogs. Yeah. And cut down on that number, man. It's just like so much more productive when I can spend one-on-one time with with these dogs and it's like all i say all the time is quality over quantity and i just think that i've been missing the boat lately i feel like i feel like quarantine is making me realize all this stuff i have a heating pad and i'm freezing (laughs) and i just put it on my gut i'm like (laughs) i'm cold oh my goodness it's cold in here this is gonna be a fun episode somebody get me something i can feel it already i feel the spirit guys so friday was terrible Quality over quantity, we realize we need to slow down our lives. So I suppose we're going to make that happen because you can't keep going like this. You're going to die. Yes. And by like this, you mean what was going on before we kind of hit the wall here with the quarantine. Just racing and racing. Yeah. And then we didn't get to go on the one vacation we planned. Mind you, I haven't been anywhere in five years. Anywhere. Yeah, we've never taken a flight together. Something always happens. Even when I book other vacations, it was like a tornado one time, a hurricane. Yeah, last summer we we had a weekend trip planned to go down to P-Town and we had to cancel it because there was a hurricane. I know. None of you would have guessed P-Town. Yeah, I know. Where the gays are. The gay? I don't know. Oh, where the women are handsome and the men are pretty. (laughs) So pretty. So anyway, then Saturday I got to do some, again, emergency classes. Um, That was yesterday. Yesterday, because today's Sunday. Yeah, I got home from working. Check, I, check, check. I've been helping out my folks in Hudson. I grew up, I don't know if you guys know this, but I grew up on a uh, agricultural farm. It's not a huge farm, but... For Julian's Farms? Yes, that's my last name pre- prior to getting married and changing it. But I have been spending some time out there helping my sister out. She has a new project going on this year. She has grown a field of tulips and is offering Pick Your Own which has been slightly challenging with the social distancing, but I think that we've been doing a great job with trying to uh, make sure that we're following all the rules. But that's been her project, and it has brought so much joy to so many people in this time because they can actually do something outside safely and get you know this amazing bundle of joy, literally, after they yeah, finish doing what they're doing. So I was out there all day <laughs> yesterday, which was Saturday. Laurie was back at the house, and she did two emergency training classes. And when I got home, I was like, oh, my God, Like you, you seem like a dog trainer again. Like, you were happy to tell me about what the classes were all about and what happened. And I was like, oh, thank God she... Meanwhile, Leo She's was like, oh, I'll be home in like a half hour. And I was like, oh, okay. And then like three hours later, she's like, you wouldn't believe it. I dropped off tulips to every single customer we ever <laughs> had ever. And I was like, uh, that's probably why it's two hours later than you said. And But it's true. You notice that small things in this quarantine make you happy? Mm-hmm. I get happy when I'm walking the dogs. I say hello to somebody I don't know. I'm like, oh, hey. Right. And we're all happy. Anyway, so yesterday, so then I had a little fire in me. And then we went for a dog walk. I can tell you about the classes. Yeah, maybe, talk about the classes. What was going maybe on? Maybe we should talk about the because de- if we're talking to like if we were we were gonna have like a people pen conversation, I think I would have told people this conversation in the pen about walking in the woods that Leah didn't initially want to do. I'm like, no, we're going for a walk now with the boys. Yeah. So to backtrack just slightly, the name of this episode is Thoughts from the People Pen. And the People Pen, if you don't know what it is, is the small fenced in area that's outside of our dog yard. Where and you keep the humans. That's where we keep the humans to make it safe for the dog to come in because there are two barriers to entry. So there is, if you do it properly, absolutely no risk that a dog will escape the yard ever. So that area is where the folks drop off and we oftentimes have these very enriching conversations with our folks from the people pen. And we wanted to kind of use this episode as a way for you to connect with us, make it super candid and personal so that you could feel like you're just talking to us through the fence. So that's the name of the episode. And uh, I'll let you take it from there. I just want to preface that. So towards the end of our walk, we are all happy in the woods. Look at us go. It's dusk. Had a good productive day, and then we and then Leah goes, Oh, and I look, there's three deer. These are large, these are large animals, they're huge, <laughs> and, and they one, blend right in with the forest. Two were like, Screw this, and ran, and then there was one just still, 
Then I look over. Leah <laughs> pops out the camera. I go, oh, she's going she's gonna to show off now. Leah wants to video. This is what I'm thinking. This is how in sync we're not. Um, so <laughs> she, I'm like, oh, she's going to show off. So she takes out the phone, starts videoing it. And I'm thinking she wants to show people how Ruben is in a perfect sit next to her or in a stand looking, not running off either way. Impressive. Which he was. He was. He was just standing he there. He was and just I go, standing there, yeah. And I go, oh. And I, as soon as I see the deer, I put Buddha on the leash because it's a Saturday night, folks. You know, the vet's not open. <laughs> it's I'm getting like, dark. <laughs> yeah. Screw this. Right. And uh, so... And I can't see over the hill. So if he runs over, I'm not going to be able to see the dog. And that bothers me. But Leah is a bit more of a free spirit. And she just lets him go. So here he is. And I'm thinking, oh, we're going to walk by calmly. And Leah's going to videotape our dogs being so obedient walking next to us. This is ne- walking next to the wild I'm animal. Thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking maybe this fella's not even going to move. You know? We'll be like a tree. And we'll leave. So... Two seconds, maybe a second after I have this thought, Leah goes, go get him. I go, what the <laughs> hell? What the hell are you doing? Off goes Ruben. Like a bullet. And I mean, hot pursuit. I can't see Ruben. I don't know. He could be dead. He could be stepped on. But the biggest thing for me was like, oh my God, there's so much barking. So like they ran out of sight no. and there are power lines that are run parallel to the trail that we were on and on the other side of those power lines are residences so we're in the woods but like we're not really in the woods so he takes off towards the power lines towards the houses where the deer are where we can't see him where we can't see where you thought it'd be a good idea yeah and uh i just hear this like chorus of barking and i know that it's not reuben so i know that it's like the dogs are either in the houses or in their yards like losing their minds like oh crap so <laughs> I don't now, know. Like, now Leah <laughs> thinks it's a bad idea, right? But imagine if the other I'm dogs are still filming the whole time too. I'm just like, uh, whatever. Imagine, See how long it takes. I know to she come still back. had her camera out. That's like when somebody videotapes something. You're like, oh my god, who is videotaping this whole thing and not doing anything? I bet all the other dogs were like, <laughs> yeah, do it, man, do it. We've been following these sons of bitches forever, and we haven't been able to catch them. <laughs> Go, Ruben. I'm gonna put that on my Instagram story today. I think. But yeah. then, uh, so I had the e collar on him. No, wait he's, though. Because, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because now I'm like, well, now we can't see him. I where where's Ruben? Nobody knows. And I go, I've been. I was silent the whole time. I had a whole story going on in my head, but I was silent. I go, Leah. And then she goes, Oh, no problem, Ruben. <laughs> Quickly followed by, Oh shit, he's he's not coming. And I'm like, Yeah, what the what's what the hell. So, you go ahead and you had your. I had the e collar. I gave him a tap, tappy tap, and he came back I, in very, very short amount of time. He was back, but in the first thing that happens when he comes back, Lori goes, oh, I hope he doesn't have fleas. <laughs> I'm like, he's gonna have some nasty shit all over him. Like, I can't even. It's like the eighth time I've washed it, washed him this week. He like rolls in a bunch of stuff. Oh, god. So just, just me. Leah. Oh, no problem. Ruben, <laughs> oh sh, oh shit, he's not coming back. Yeah, I would have never anticipated such a thing. I should bookend this story with my dog has excellent recall. I mean, he's like a nervous wreck if he doesn't know where we are. And Buddha is the same. But there was a moment where I was like, okay, that deer is probably the most satiable thing that has ever happened to him. Like chasing that deer because I've never let him take off after an animal. I always recall him after. I like, was surprised myself, Leah. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have roll the dice, you know, let him have a good time. He had a blast. He came back. He was so happy. And he, he did not have fleas. So that's good. I will say, I feel There's like... There's no the, blood on him. He I, didn't make a hole on it I, in anybody. Yeah, I felt bad for Buddha because when he came back, I felt like he was going like, Buddha, man, you don't even know what happened, dude. You should have seen what I see. You should have seen how close. I, I could smell... I could sm- smell it. It was right there. It was right there. I'm going to think about it all night. It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. So that yeah, so yeah, that was hey, Saturday night. That's why we train our dogs, though, right? So that they can have a little so bit of fun every deer. once in a while. No, I've never said that to a person. I'd be like, oh, we train our dogs so that when you come upon a family of deer <laughs> in the woods near the power lines, 
<laughs> you can just send them off and hope for the best. Well, I've never said that. It was now an experience. I, now I will. It was an experience, you know. But we have a lot of. I have a lot of practice. I have. I. I do not let him chase things because he definitely has a high prey drive. So that's been something that, and he's going to be three. So it's not like we haven't had plenty of practice doing the right thing, I guess you could say. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, there was a second there because I couldn't, I couldn't see <laughs> him and there was like three of them and the barking was just crazy. And I know part of the barking was him. He was definitely like barking. So. Oh yeah. He was, he was in hot he was, pursuit. He was in chase mode. He's flying he through the air. He was in a mode, and I was like, oh, man, that deer is... And it's huge. Like, it looks like the size of, like, a skinny cow. And it you thought huge. it was safe. You thought it was safe. A skinny cow. <laughs> yeah, it was a skinny cow. It was a, it was a dieting cow. Well, somebody actually. is going to appreciate this story, and I am not encouraging anybody to let their dog chase deer. Where but, coyotes uh, live? It was a moment. We it don't know. A we don't know. There could have been a whole coyote family being like, oh, thank God, look at the bonus we have, the appetizer. What is that? Yeah, a mix? I'm, I'm not going to lie. The barking, the barking. A sign of mutt? I don't know. Anyway, he you thought safe. something happened when he got fleas. when he barked. You thought some business I, was going on. I did. On. Yeah, yeah, I, was I like, go. Oh, he's, dead. <laughs> he's dead. He's dead. Because that's where I go. Because I'm Italian. You die. <laughs> City girls die in the woods. I go. We just lost a dog. He's over the hill in a mountain. He either got stepped on by the skinny cow, as you say. <laughs> I hope you spit that coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anyway, he's fine. He's not eaten, and he did not have fleas. And I got it on film. So see maybe how your I'll... pet corrector spray works from eighty feet away. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't scare the coyote away. <laughs> maybe I'll post that on my Instagram story uh, later on today if uh, if you're lucky and if it doesn't make me look too bad. Uh, but anyway, that was yesterday, and then last night I felt terrible because I was making myself my little yogurt dish, and you know I let I usually let Buddha have a little yogurt after the container afterwards. these are definitely pet family problems right here what and you're saying yes so I, I usually let buddha have it because about buddha he doesn't he doesn't have a really really high food drive so when he does like something we're like ooh, he likes it so i let buddha out to go to the bathroom and ruben was next to me and so i had put the yogurt down to let ruben eat it and Buddha was outside and like he was looking in and he started barking <laughs> He's like, what the hell? You got the deer yeah. and the freaking yogurt? Yeah, so I, like, go, I go over to the bathroom. Laurie was getting out of the shower, and I was like, Laurie, I feel so bad. Like, I always give Buddha the yogurt. I gave it to Ruben, and she's like, just put some yogurt in the empty container. So, like, I'm at the fridge so putting pretend. some cottage cheese in so the empty container so, so that I could give it to him when he came back in the house. And I was like, we're so pathetic. I oh, didn't man. do it. I did it. You didn't. Of course. Because he enjoys it and he doesn't like food. This dog will literally turn his nose up to a piece of steak or like raw beef. Or it's he is so picky, such a picky eater that when he actually likes something, both of us are just like, yeah. ooh, he likes it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, the Italian, we're it. like, oh, feed him, he likes it. Yeah, totally. Uh, anyway. So while you were picking tulips. You were in classes. Talk about some, those classes. You had some good ones. I had some classes and I had... um. A 24-hour period where I got three phone calls. All the dogs are under one year of age. Um, I'm not going to say the breeds because all of our customers listen to this and some of the people you know, some you don't, whatever. Um, so all under one year old, one of the dogs growled at the kids. One of the dogs growled and bit the kids and put multiple put puncture wounds in the mother on two different occasions the human mother and an, a pun- mother. yep and a puncture wound in the human dad and then Elle's like stitchable too oh yeah and the dog's like under six months she old. didn't get a stitch though because who wants to go to coronavirus soup um, the, like going to the hospital is just it's too scary now people with kids god forbid anything happens um, shout out to all the doctors and nurses risking their lives every day yes thank you um, so let's see we had the growling at the kids the puncture wounds and then resource guarding um, specifically what the dog considered high value item so he was guarding a lick mat i guess um, they put like peanut butter and stuff like that or antler 
um, bully stick, th- that type of resource guarding. Um, so that's a, that's a lot, right? Three phone calls, 24 hours, puppy pandemic problems, right? Mm. Or pandemic puppy problems? Pandemic puppy problems. PPP? New pod, new pod new podcast title. Yeah. Next episode. Yeah, I'm pandemic feeling... Pandemic puppy problems. Man, I, was, I knew that we were going to have problems, and then once everyone started adopting puppies... And I thought, I'm, I'm really happy that people are finding joy in their dogs. Um, I was just, I, I just, I was like, wow, we're going to enter a new problem here. Like when dog training starts up again or when the stay at home order, I, I just didn't know what, I'm like, what's going to be on the road? We have these dogs who are, you know, at a very young age, four months old, put puncture wounds in their in the mother and father, and all of these problems all had to do with people giving the dog too much freedom and excessive love without structure. So if we can take one, you know, point home today, because usually in the people pen, we screw around, we talk, shoot the shit, whatever, and then usually a parent will be like, oh, hey, you know what? Really, guys, I can't stress enough to give love with structure. All of these incidents happen and at home, these dogs are allowed to just to, to walk around. It's not that I don't love my dog. If anyone sees me in my Rottweiler, most of the time he's in my armpit and I'm lying on the floor and Buddha's looking up at me or Ruben's curled up. But when you see problems, you have to pull back. I mean, I, I like to think I practice what I preach. And when we saw any issues, you know, we saw at one point we saw Ruben kind of guarding you, Leah. And he would growl and we're like, mm, nope. So we got crated more often throughout the day. We made sure that we put him in, whatever, we took care of it. And with Buddha, I didn't leave him free. I mean, he was like a year and a half before I even thought of leaving him out of the crate at nighttime. I mean, I could care less if he was out of the crate. I knew that he, all the time I spent with him, we go on walks, three-mile walks, we go on hikes in the woods. He's learning all the time. Don't be in such a rush to get your dog out of the crate. Stop giving him so many freedoms. You can still enjoy, love, and pet your dog, but if your dog is slightly nervous and he's always lying at your feet or just you're, you're constantly loving on him and there's no obedience or he doesn't feel secure or you're not doing these what Leah calls confidence building exercises or, you know, know who your dog is and then really work with it. I, I feel like nervous about people. <laughs> During this time, letting their really young dogs, I'm worried about separation anxiety. I'm concerned that I got three calls in 24 hours. Um, Some, these were people who had puppies, of course, and I was only able to do one class with most of these people before the pandemic hit before the stay at home order went into place and everyone got scared. And so I lost touch with them. And literally, I'm texting these people every day. And I'm like, all right, guys, today's day one. Or like, okay, you got through the whole afternoon and night. You guys did a great job. Okay, here's day one, the, the official from the start. Okay, how are we doing? Like, I want everyone to be happy with their dogs. I don't want to have these these problems. Yeah, and I think that people right now, including myself, we are in this heightened emotional state because we don't have the normal things that are occupying our mental space like the structure of going to work every day or going to school every day. Or for me, you know, getting, I mean, to think about the number of things I was doing in a day before quarantine hit and everything just kind of like, um, it, it really is making me not stressed, but I am hyper aware of everything going on in my life. You think things you never thought of before. Yeah, and I think what's happening with some folks is that they are doing that with their dogs because, and I I think in all three cases that you're talking about, these are like hyper aware dog parents. Like they just have a lot of healthy anxiety and worry about the state of their dog and what's going on with their dog. And I think because they're spending 24 seven with their dog now, they're just like, Oh, we have some problems here. And in addition to realizing that they have problems, I think kind of unintentionally because they're around all the time, they're making those problems worse. 
Oh, yeah. So, yeah. And all three of those homes told me, I said, guys, I said, this is a difficult time, and I know you're seeking comfort from your animal. And they said, absolutely. All three of them go, yep, this is a time. I don't know what to do. Some of them have kids at home. Now they're a teacher. I mean, they're, like, ready to drink at, like, 9 a.m., and they're overwhelmed, and they have their dog, and they're seeking comfort from him when he's really just a puppy, and he needs just as much structure, too. So now you're a dog trainer and a school teacher and a parent, and if you work from home, well, screw that. Now you're a worker. <laughs> you're a worker for someone else. And I totally understand taking comfort from your own dog during this time. My mind has been, I couldn't even function on Friday night. I was just staring at Leah until she finally, like, okay, Laurie, I shut it off. <laughs> Because I couldn't do it. Yep. I think we're just, everybody is very emotional because of everything that's been going on. You know, our life has been turned upside down. We don't know what our business is. I mean, we're lucky enough to be able to integrate into the workforce and change some of the ways that we do things so that we can still work right now a little bit. And I know that a lot of people can't, you know, and I know a lot of dog people are struggling. And, um, you know, I'm grateful for the fact, the ability to work. Um even if it can't be, you know, at full bore. But I just feel as though all three cases that you told me about, and then today I kind of got to hop on a call with you and and talk a little bit about, it really is just a matter of things have changed so much in such a little amount of time. These dogs previously were getting that time in the crate where they could decompress and not have stimulation all the time. And now with everybody being home, they're constantly interacting with people and, you know, they're if they have two dogs like the other dog. And despite the fact that from our perspective, that c- could mean that could be a good thing. From their perspective, it's not because they're never getting a break from you. Like our two dogs right now are in their crate. Ruben's in his crate. Boo-boo's loose downstairs. But I guarantee you that they are sleeping right now because they need rest. Another thing, too, is when we used to take care of dogs daily, I remember uh, two specific dogs. They weren't themselves. And they were acting weird that day. I thought they were not as happy. I know it sounds ridiculous. Um, Their mood was different, a little uh, short-tempered with other dogs. So I said to the the parents of the dogs I said hey I'm not prying into your life but is there some stuff going on at home and I remember um I dropped something once and then I raised my voice another time and one of the dogs who was acting weird like coward put his head down and I thought maybe you know that's why I asked I was like maybe they're getting pissed off in the house at each other and they're yelling and sure enough both of the parents in the, these different houses had something going on that was causing a lot of yelling within the household. You know that tempers are running high right now because if I feel this way, and I'm a pretty like, I just go, 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 but my rational side constantly duels, I feel like, with this like manic side that it, I have. So if I feel this way and I can usually keep things right or make an effort, people at home right now must be, having their moments where they're yelling at the kids, just, can you just listen to me for this one time? No, you can't walk naked. Bye. I'm doing a Zoom call now at work. Like, get the, put your pants on. Get back in your cell. So these are things happening at home. Your dog is being exposed to it. And all the feelings that you have, you're nervous, freakishly petting the dog. You think that he can't feel that? He certainly can. You're screaming at the kids. He needs a break. He's exhausted. If yeah. anything, you're doing him a favor, putting him in his crate away from you. Because we're all a hot mess. Yeah, hot that, to trot mess. <clears throat> that's one of the things I said on the call that we were on last is, I don't mean to sound woo-woo about this stuff. Woo. But it is, there is something to say be said for your level of energy and your dog picking up on that. You know, it's like setting intentions. Like if you have, if you're stressed, your dog's going to pick up on that just like people can. You know, not just like people can, but in a similar way. So keep that in mind, too, when you're working your dog, whether or not you're just taking them for a simple walk or you're trying to do something more advanced, your mental state is going to, is really going to influence them and all the chaos that's going on in your house. If you're not able to separate your dog, 
make sure that you can, whether it's in a different room or we prefer a crate, even if it's an adult dog, um, just simply so that when we do go back to normal, you know, you're not in a situation because I think we were kind of expecting people to reach out to us after the quarantine, you know, acquiring a puppy, blah, blah, blah. And then they go back to work and all of a sudden the dog's life gets turned upside down. But I think it's been interesting in this past week to get inquiries for behavior changes during quarantine even. So yeah, this stuff is real and it's something that, you know, we're kind of witnessing firsthand and, to be honest with you, not easy to fix. You know, it's not easy to, you know, have another stressor on top of everything else that's going on with this quarantine, not knowing, you know, when life is going to get back to normal. And then on top of it, worrying about our own physical health, you know, because at this point, we all know somebody that's gotten sick, some worse than others. We know a lot of people. Yeah. And we know quite a few people, um, some that are even our age, you know, that have, I've been really having a tough time with this um, virus. So the stresses are there and, you know, we definitely feel for you guys if you're, if you're dealing with health issues and, um, you know, aside from anything dog related, that is, it's a super, super stressful time for a lot of, a lot of people. So. And as far as um, when you start to see the problems, guys, no matter who your dog trainer is, I bet you that they'd be so grateful that you called them the absolute second you saw a problem and you didn't suffer for two weeks or three weeks before you called. You know what? There's a million ways to talk. I don't love, um, you know, doing the FaceTimes or WhatsApp or whatever. It's a little awkward for me, but just as talking on this podcast sometimes is awkward for me, but call them up. I don't care who texts me as long as I can help you, as long as I can prevent your dog from drilling another hole in you. I mean, come on. It's all right. Ask for help. You don't have to do it on your own. That's why you hire us. You know, like we're there to help. We want to see any good dog trainer wants to see you live happily ever after with your dogs because all dog trainers love to spend time with their animals. I wouldn't be able to chill with either one of my dogs if they were tools or I didn't address the subject right away. Like we're here for you. So get out, go ask your trainer. Yeah, absolutely. And They're if bored. You, if you have a, um, a, tr- a good trainer that you work with, that is a lifelong relationship. If it's not, you did not find the right trainer. Yeah. We know everything about you. Yeah. And you know, we know everything. <laughs> I know about- when you got mad at your husband. I mean, I drove through Winchester <laughs> yesterday to do, to drop off some stuff and it was literally like, I knew a everybody family walking down the road with their dog, like, I mean, and I know everything about them. I know their kids' names. I know the activities that they're in, you know, and it's like, you know, I'm not saying that that's going to be everybody or every trainer or whatever, but there is an element of just having a holistic relationship with your trainer. Even if you haven't talked to them in years and years, call them up. If you're having an issue and they're a good trainer, they're going to help you out. And if no other reason to just like reconnect. I had another woman call me, uh, email me. And she said, I trained with you in 2013 mm. and she's getting a new puppy and, and I'm really happy because sometimes I get a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm working on the family's second dog or whatever, but her first dog that I trained was, is a nightmare. And I mean, I thought it was the way she described it. I'm like, oh, this isn't. And then as the emails came and the, like the truth kept coming out, I was like, oh my God, why didn't this lady call me? This right. is out of control. And I, I was like, you have, you have two completely separate issues. And so I'm going to address the old dog and the new dog separately, but I definitely have to be able to do a home visit and that's not happening now. Yep. Yeah. We've had to do a lot, make a lot of changes to accommodate the social distancing and make sure that we're complying with those guidelines when we do classes. So from now on, all the classes, thank God the nice weather's coming, are going to be weather dependent and happening outdoors. And we're going to try to do it. It's hot with the face masks on, but you got to do what you got to do. And we're going to do the best we can. And it's just going to be. It's going to be a change, but it's going to be good because I think in the long run, we're still going to be able to help people out and, um, and, you know, hopefully, hopefully have some more focused time as well with people and their, and their dogs. I'm, I'm excited about it. So I think it's good too. Like 
if you, you know, you take that hands off approach. So the person's working their dog the whole entire time because you don't want to constantly keep switching leashes back and forth. And of course, we have hand washing stations or whatever. Sanita- what You can bleach your hands out. I don't know. It's just like a nightmare. Yeah, it's quite You should see me with the sanitizer. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, just can you just lie saw me? I'll just spin around. All right. Just get everything. <laughs> Lift up your Did feet. Did you get everything? Spray the bottom Do of the pet. Raise your arms up. So, anyway. It's, yeah. I hope you guys are doing all right. Yeah, I hope everybody's doing well, too. Please reach out to us. We are around, available, and willing to talk about pretty much anything. So a lot of the folks that are listening, we have a very personal relationship with you. So thank you very much for tuning in and for all of your support. And again, if you are new to the podcast, please check out some of the older episodes because I have interviewed some super talented people. And many of them I've become close with, friends with even, and we do call each other regularly if it's just to check in or if it's to get advice. But this community of people... Coffee talk. Yeah, coffee talk. But the community of people that have been introduced to one another via the podcast has been really special. So I'm excited to continue this project when I can. And you know when we can do face-to-face, face-to-face interviews are really important to me because I can get that um, good quality audio and also just a super authentic interview as well. So again, please like and subscribe to the podcast if you're into this. Leave a good review. Tell all your friends. Follow me on Instagram because that's when you'll know when the new episode is going to be coming out. And um, yeah, it was just really great to sit down with Laurie today and talk pretty casually. We hope you enjoyed our conversation. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>